we should have, should have changed that from you can begin to you must begin now <laughs> because we have I was the, trying to be nice about it. I was like, like hey, whenever yeah. you're ready. We have the TO next to us, and yeah. <laughs> probably it's because we're early we're... in the morning. But if this was a semi final or something, like people would be mad. <laughs> mm. All righty. We're going to get going here. Got to feel it. Got to feel it. Got to feel it. Mm. Mm. You want you want me to tell Rodrigo to reach him? No, no, he's he's uh, moving now. No. Uh, they they realized. Yep, yep. I'm going to tell the yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There is a lot of pressure on top sixteen. The, the top sixteen matches. The first match is like, oh, oh my God, I'm gonna pass. Uh, the, the, there is a little there is a little pressure because you know yeah. who you are facing from the, the yeah. day before. Man, the the. the um, All right, here we go. Here Australia... we go. We gotta start. We gotta start Wait. the intro. Start the intro. Yep. Hold on. Hello, everybody. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron podcast, and we're coming to you live from the top sixteen of the Lima Open. This event is a charity event supporting La Casa de Todos, the house of everybody. It's a charity in Peru who is building semi-permanent and permanent housing for the homeless population in Peru. If you want to be a part of that cause, type exclamation point donate in the chat. Yesterday, we raised over $1,000. So if you guys want to continue to add on to that number, that'd be fantastic. I teased it a little bit yesterday. You guys wanted that final top stream prize, and I said, you know what? No, you got to prove it. To, you got to show me that you want it by donating to the cause, and that's it. Today, the sub counter. I mean, while well, that's great, but today's more is about donations. So let's get it done. Uh, exclamation point! Donate. There's an article there. Scroll down. The link is at the bottom. Today, I'm joined by my co-host Pedro Segara. Hello. How are you doing at home? Uh, before, before we continue, people are noticing that we haven't started the overlay timer. Oh, I got it. Keep going. You go. You you do your thing. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Uh, well, like you say, it's uh, top. Is day two? It's top sixteen. So four four rounds for for today. No Nantex, no Boba. <laughs> and the and the world rejoiced. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, let. So what, let's what do we what do we have the on the list. table? Uh, we have Carson Ray. He's bringing the the old po, the, the original po, uh, with heroic R4 Astromech and the a heavy laser cannon. Uh, we have Lulo, and he has a well, that's a that's a ship we haven't seen in a while. Uh, Lulo Lampard in the A wing with Long Wolf. That's a little Rose Tico with Citrupio and Jess Pava. Um, weird enough, we have a, an A wing with no heroic. With no optics, and we have a Jess Power with no astromech. She she loves the BB astromech. Mm -hmm. um, on Marcelo's side, we have um, this is like like the all the aces version, but with the new points. We have uh, Darth Vader with the afterburners and fire control system. We have the Grand Inquisitor with nothing, and we have no whisper, but we have Echo with the fifth brother Gunner, the targeting computer, and collision detector. Yeah, I figured we. I picked this matchup to get started today. It's look, it's very classic, very classic matchup. You got, you know, resistance aces and some support versus imperial aces. This this feels good. Uh, looking at the opening position here, uh, I really like Marcelo's position. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about Lulo. If you're not familiar with Lulo, especially if you're a newer player, uh, was was probably the most popular A wing at the start of of the introduction of the RZ2 A wing's ability. Is why you defend a performer an attack if you are stressed you must roll one fewer defense dice uh, or one additional attack dice so this a wing is able to become a three attack two agility a wing now that is great uh, for uh, for attacking but defending against uh, Darth Vader who's starting to look at you right now you can see that that Darth Vader and echo are both approaching uh, Lulo up there I'm a little bit worried I I know that uh, people like to set up those a wings on the flank but if you can get rid of that flanker right away before the uh, the formation on the bottom fully develops you could end up being in pain now the other thing is 
you could question, well, is Lulo just bait? Uh, bait? And the answer is yes, it's yes. just bait. <laughs> <laughs> now, will will Vader be able to reach you, though? That's a question. Because I believe, looking over, this Vader does have afterburner, so able to add a little bit more movement at the end of the maneuver. Uh, we'll see if, uh, if Carson ends up stressing Lulo, uh, but nicely uh, behind the cloud no. right now. Yeah, I, I don't think you stress Lulo here. I mean, it's okay if your A-Wing is running away. A-Wings have, uh, they, they can shoot from the rear. Uh, so so that's okay. But I don't think you stress here in case Vader has done uh, like a five straight plus afterburners um, plus uh, what Vader does. Lock and focus. But Vader, nope. All right, took it casual. Yes. Took it casual. All right, I like I like the move here. This is Marcelo calling it. Said, so listen, I'm pretty sure that's bait because if you over pursue with Vader, he can end up being out of position. Yep, I mean you only have two boosts during the the entire game. Uh, that's going to be also a problem for the little group of three formation because um, it's a little weird. J Jess Powell likes to be with friends because of her ability. Rose Tico wants to be behind friends because uh, also of her ability. But um, if you want to chase, I mean, the Grand Inquisitor, Whisper, and Vader are too far away. The X-Wings can boost. Rose cannot boost. So they have to stick together in a way that Jess and Rose help each other. But uh, Jess says like, hey, hurry up. We want to catch this guy. And Rose says, uh, slow down. I can't. You have to go slow, uh, so that may give Marcellus enough time, probably to to chase down Lulo or to get into a better position. Those rocks don't really help uh, Carson's here, because it's going to be really tricky for Jess and, and Rose to go through the rocks and chase those Imperial Aces. Now, as we continue to see this opening develop here, I want to remind you that today's rounds are all brought to you by Curl Paw Creatives. Right now, the their Black Friday sale is going on. You can go to, uh, you can type exclamation point CPC in the chat to get the link to the shop. A new item on the shop that I'm a fan of is the new official Gold Squadron podcast LED lamp. You can get yours now. Also, he's uh, selling custom ones. So if you have a, a local squad logo, maybe a faction symbol that you would like to be turned into a lamp he's doing all those custom designs available for you guys so check them out curl paw creatives they have been a sponsor of ours for years now and uh honestly it's been amazing to uh, to have their support for all these years so uh, again curlpawcreatives.com check them out all right now pedro who are you choosing as your champion i am going to go with the empire why <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't seen Mar Marcelo flying Echo, but um, I know how tricky, how difficult it can be to catch Echo. I mean, it has lots of possible final position for that decloak, and also has the, the collision detector. So essentially, even even next to a gas cloud or next to a rock, you can have these. Uh, you, you can decloak through, through through the obstacles. Um, that being said, if we reach into a final stage of the game where Marcelo has Echo, um, he's winning by points, and Carson has, like, let's say, Jess and Rose, it's going to be impossible for him to catch a really well-flown Echo. She's really impossible. I remember flying against um, Echo here in Peru, and at some point I was say, "Hey, I'm, am I winning? Yes. Okay, I'm going to run away. I don't care. I'm never going to catch uh, this uh, this Echo. Plus, I'm pretty sure Echo here is the most expensive ship on Marcelo's side. Probably mm. uh, no, no, it's Vader. But it's it's just there. That's three points away. And these aces like to face uh, also." Um, Aces like to face jousters because yep. they can have they, they cannot dodge them. And he has Vader, he has Echo, he has the Grand Inquisitor. Um, th that's what they like to do. Also, remember that Jess Papa here will only have her reroll ability once because he, she hasn't bring any. He hasn't brought sorry uh, any astromech. Mm -hmm. 
So that could be really important. Like most of the time she's with friends and say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting attacked. I'm going to use my own charge. Uh, when I get attacked, I use my, one of my BB Astromech charges. That's not going to be the case here. Also, uh, this Lulo um, is a, a little weird because most of the time I've seen Lone Wolf uh, in a three ship list and it, the times you trigger Lone Wolf are zero. Because somehow at the engage moment, ships are eventually arranged zero to two from each other. I don't know how this can work in a fall ship list. So you you increase the probabilities of having a fall ship at range zero to two. So that means no long wall. Also, it doesn't have the, um, the heroic, which is really good when you roll only two green dice, which probably he will do because that's what what Lula does. So I, I think the, the advantage is on the on the Empire. So one of the things looking uh, looking at that that lone wolf, I would guess that Carson most likely uh, keeps this block that you see on your your bottom right hand side there with Rose, Jess, and Poe. Uh, and, and tries to maybe approach from a fr from from two different vectors. Now, talking about Jess and uh, and Rose together, they is if they both stay together, essentially they'll, they'll both have one re-roll each on um, on offense. Uh, maybe maybe Carson has has run the math. He's practiced it a little bit. Maybe the the single re-roll could be enough because if, if we're looking at just like the, the average, right? Uh, now here you, you see Lulo possibly coming in. If you look at average, on average you're getting a hit a focus and one blank so if he's leaning in if you're leaning into it there say hey you know i got one blank i only need one reroll on average one might be enough yes uh the problem is going to be aligning those firing arcs with with the aces probably the, the easiest one would be like Vader because of I mean, Vader has a lot of mobility, but in, in these three ships, between these three ships, uh, I think the easiest one, one to catch is Vader. Uh, like I mentioned, Echoes are going to be really, really tricky. Uh, the Grand Inquisitor has a really good dial. Um, the Grand Inquisitor is also a trap. I've seen a lot of players falling for that trap, like saying, hey, I'm already taking one shield, two shields from the Grand Inquisitor. Let's take him down, and he doesn't go down. He has a really ridiculous ability uh, like the, that denies you that range one bonus, and that guy with an evade, three dice, denying those, those range one bonus, he can get a little bit of immortal ship. So uh, it's also the problem is that he's, uh, I think it's 52, so it's the cheapest list on Marcelo's side. So, uh, you don't want to go after the, the Inquisitor. Probably you have, you want to go after Vader. Uh, Vader doesn't have an evade action, which is good for uh, for the for the pilots shooting at Vader. Uh, but the problem is that he hits really hard. Yeah. Now you see Vader coming five straight. Did end up going after Lulo and uh, and maybe recognizes the 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 ability of Lulo to flank there, come in five straight, and has the ability to afterburners and maybe even get into range one in his opening engagement. Notice that Carson did not stress his Lulo. Yep. Yeah, but Lulo also doesn't have any defensive tokens. All he has is Lone Wolf and and hope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I saw the movies. It, uh, I heard that was enough. So we'll get the force expenditure from Vader to uh, take the focus action. So that'll be that fully modified shot. Vader, very consistent in his offense. Do notice he also has fire control system. So we'll be able to hold on to that target lock if need be. Now, Poe coming four straight, likely boosting. There you go. So uh, ace, aces be hunting. Now, the difference here is the Inquisitor, the Grand Inquisitor, is much more defensive than uh, than Lulo. So we'll see what the trade ends up being here. Yep. Uh, that's, a, that's a crazy Poe. Um, 
Rose coordinated him, I think, to acquire uh, to perform a fast action, and then he boosts and locks. So that's a three action Poe on this round. And here's our first shot. Let's get those dice up. And Vader. Oh. oh all right. So not going to be able to have any crits if he ends up spending the target lock here. I, I think you spend the lock anyway. Yeah. You, um, I mean, you you like the crits, but you have to acknowledge you're shooting at a, at a three agility ship. So most likely you won't be dealing those three damage. Yeah. Probably only one or two. Spends a oh, there's a crit lock. anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just roll a natty. Just roll a natty. Two hits and a crit. Lulo has three dice defending. Lone Wolf is available for defense. Oh, he got two. Lone Wolf's <laughs> expenditure coming here. Remember, that recharges once per turn. Flips the charge. And here is the roll. Looking for a natty. And got oh, it. Yep. Three. Let's get some natties in the chat. That's a way to get it started right here. Able to shrug off that shot from Darth Vader in the opening. And here comes Poe at range three. Uh, but that's a Grand Inquisitor with an Evade and two Force Tokens available. Let's see. Three dice. Does have a target lock available. Doesn't need it. Spends a focus for three hits. And yep. And should be able to shrug this off. Oh, he's going to have to oh. spend everything here in order yep. to avoid. He spends both force and the evade. Now, not taking damage is great, but having to force starve yourself in this opening can be a little bit tough. Now, here comes Lulo. It's going to be two, two dice. Uh, no mods because Lone Wolf has already been spent. And you can see from uh, from Carson's arc there on Lulo that Echo is also out of range, so we're not going to be getting any shots there either. Oof, that's enough. <laughs> that's, that was close. <laughs> no damage here. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, the big problem here is that you... Um, it's a problem with the Grand Inquisitor, right? Like, like most of the time, you are going to be spending that one force for the Grand Inquisitor's ability. And the round that you have to spend both force, you have to spend a couple of rounds after that just to recover the second force. So um, the good news for the Grand Inquisitor is he's in a perfect position to, perf to execute a five extreme maneuver boost and probably be out of post range. So that's good for the Grand Inquisitor. The problem is if Lulo comes that way, mm -hmm. because um, Lulo can like perform a three bank to the left, and even if Vader does a four K, he will be really far away from Vader. Vader has to spend a lock also. So if Vader performs a four K, he can afterburners, yep. but he cannot uh, he cannot lock. Right, because so he, he got rid that, of that lock already. Yep, that will be only two dice attack. All right, so looking at the board state right now, you also you have Rose and Jess here on the bottom, having the possibility to take that two. T uh, sorry, that turn around the rock. It, it might be a little bit tight for Rose. I don't think that pod has a three hard, right? I think it's just a two hard. No. Yeah, so not not going to be able to get completely around that, but could be a good opportunity to go after Vader. Uh, I don't know if he'd do it. It's a little bit risky business there. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Poe, I mean, do we think Poe ends up turning in here, or are we going to continue chasing the uh, the Grand Inquisitor? Um, I mean, it, as the problem is the Poe's stress. So Grand Inquisitor is not. Grand Inquisitor can do that, that five straight and boost. Poe at most can do a, a three three straight to and boost because if he does uh, execute a four straight, it's still a white maneuver, you will be facing the top of the table, but the Grand Inquisitor will be on your left. So you, I mean, you could you could bank here. I mean, you are uh, one of the last ships, um, I mean, uh, before Vader, to move. So you can wait for the what the Inquisitor does. And you do a two bank blue, and you can even close the foils before, so you can decide if you want to barrel roll uh, closer to the rocks or you want to boost. Um, I, I, I don't know. You can go either way. 
That's one of the advantage of moving moving last. That's that's what you pay for those initiative six points. The problem here is um is Echo also. I'm not sure where Echo is going to the cloak. I mean, you you want to be the most unpredictable with Echo, um, mainly for one reason. Whisper can get an evade token if Whisper hits the attack. That means that you have the evade from the cloaking and the evade from your attack, being able to spend one evade token defending and have another evade token for your cloak. Uh, Echo doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. Echo will only be uh, having access to a single evade token. Um, a single evade token. So what you want with Echo is to be the most unpredictable ship in the table and not allowing your opponent to shot a single sh I mean, to have a single shot on you because yeah. you really really don't want to spend that debate token what uh, echo's abilities rely on the cloak if you are unable to the cloak then you are just a big sigma squadron ace yeah and, and the collision detector makes it even more unpredictable right like you have a lot of flexibility on, on this board uh collision detector an absolutely excellent buy for echo uh, because of that unpredictability of that two bank, because remember, it's just like the Star Viper barrel roll. You can uh, do that bendy two bank forward or back in either direction, left or right. Or, of course, you can even do it forward. And I feel like a lot of people forget about the fact that you could also two bank forward and really extend a maneuver and be in a really different place. You see nine times out of ten people using the sideways motion, but you can't sleep. You can't sleep on uh, on two banking forward. That's right. Here comes... Oh, okay, yeah, yes, it's turning turn to left, but I don't think Rose... Will feel Rose most likely? Yeah, coordinate Rose is going time, to spray. probably. Uh, or let's maybe see. just take take a, a calculate. There, there's no reason to to coordinate there because that just stresses yeah. you. Yes, uh, Rose doesn't have like a, a really good dial when when she's stressed. Yep, and, and she's gonna have to make a, a a white two turn around the corner next turn to join Jess. Yep, that's um. That's a log action thanks to the targeting computer for uh, for Echo. I mean, it has to measure, but I'm pretty sure Lulo is, is in range 3. Having problems with the dials. Activate toggle Not... mode. Anybody who's playing Not... the TTS before, <laughs> if you don't know what toggle mode is, if you right-click on a dial and turn on toggle mode, it turns the little squares into buttons so that you can like, click it and it opens the menu and it keeps it open until you close it. If you notice that you have a lot of issues with the dials, uh, the little menus flickering, easy way to uh, save yourself a lot of frustration. There it is, the five straight. Um, boost plus focus. Lulo coming here with the three bank. Coming in. Making sure that you are really too close to Vader. The only possibility for Vader to go after you is with a 4K. Uh, but like or, we or said. The, tal the talent roll. The talent roll would land Ploppy on range one right behind it. Uh, but that would be rather aggressive. Yep. And that will be too close if you were expecting Jess Pava coming in. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Vader could also probably just do a five straight and try to get like from a different vector because the aces are like coming from the same side and you don't want to do that with your ace and here is uh oh lulu stressing himself and not getting out of echo's arc and better turning away Ah, uh, but uh, I, I don't like where the aces are. They are all in the same space. They are all in the same area. And that is an ace easy to, to catch. And there is the two bank. And you and now you can decide where you want to go. He's just going to go ahead and boost forward a little bit. Might be able to tag um, <laughs> the Inquisitor at range 3. Now, another thing we got to watch out for, Poe does have that heavy laser cannon that's a bullseye weapon only bullseye weapon only but it is for attack dice so uh 
that is a, a very d dangerous piece if uh, if Poe can get that bullseye on. And in addition oh. to six, you do have that flexibility. Oh, I, I think he will actually make a mistake because uh, he had already locked uh, the Grand Inquisitor last round. And, and there is a double double Poe lock. He should, he should have focus. There's a two Poe Dameron's lock on Grand Inquisitor. I mean, he locked... He, Hey, Grand Inquisitor again, yeah. <laughs> which you can do, which you can do, yeah. But it's not the optimal decision to have it. Like you have already have a, a lock on that ship, uh, you should just have focus. I mean, you said, "Hey, I want to know if I want to attack," but yeah, you're going the, to attack uh, right away. And they realize it. Uh, I think it's yep. just that consistency <clears throat> of always, always target lock focus, always target lock focus. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and got uh, the three hits. That was a hit already. Yeah, that that, that was a hit. Yeah. Alrighty, and the defense got the net. He's fine. Best thing he didn't have to spend that that focus because Lulu is coming in now, range three. Just barely range three. Inquisitor's glad about that. Has all four dice available for defense. Here's a three on offense. Probably uh, spend doesn't it. spend the lone wolf here because you have Echo looking at you from the side. Yep, you're going to be only one. He's safe. And here's the I echo mean, shot. Yep, range two. Uh, uh, that's why you have the lock. That's right. Targeting yep. computer. Bye, bye, bye. Gonna re -roll Let's see. That's Ooh. three. That is guaranteed one damage on Lulo. Spends uh, the focus yep. there. So first shield gone. Twenty five percent of the health on on that A wing. Out of here. Uh, I think that will be all the shots because Jess is too far away. Yep. Now here comes the the, the problem for all wolf next round is that um, since you are. The engage is happening on only one side of the table, then eventually Poe or Jess are going to be at range zero to two to Lulu. Um, I mean, at the beginning of uh, of the match, when when some engage can happen in one corner and the other ships are on the other way around, and then you can trigger Long Wolf. But during the mid game, it's it's, it's a little tricky because. I mean, you want Rose Tico to attack, you want Jespa to attack, you want Poe Dameron to attack, but Lulu is going to be, hey, hey guys, what are you doing? Social distancing, guys. Range yeah. 3 for, for me. <laughs> I, I need that range 3. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, new t-shirt idea right there. All right. <laughs> That's a long, a long wall. You have, to, you have to go long wall. Um, here, uh, I mean, good things for Inquisitor is he has uh, already recovered the two forces. Mm -hmm. That that that's what he, what's, that's what he wants. Um, uh, but I'm not sure what what you have to do here with the Grand Inquisitor. I mean, you you could turn in and try to like uh, focus boost. Lula most likely going through. Like you don't want to get too close to Vader. Vader has already lock on you. Uh, Echo. Uh, no, Echo spent the, that lock. Mm -hmm. But is you it... don't want to get like really too close when there is a Grand Inquisitor and an Echo and a Vader shooting at you. Uh, Lulu's probably just doing a, a five straight and trying to get out of there. Making room for Poe. For Poe to come in. Poe is also... Um, I should I would have barrel roll, barrel roll last round because um, I, I don't think Poe can bank here. He can only go straight. If he banks, he's going to he's going to land on the rock. Well, I mean, he's got he's got the hard turn if he wants it. He wants it. Oh, he, he, he's, he's, he's an R right? four astromech. It's 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 I not a that. huge deal. Yeah, he's he, he's an interceptor. He's all right. Yeah, I I think uh, that if he had barrel rolled, he might have a little bit of a better better position to come through the back around the top of that asteroid. But uh, this couple of coming turn, he's got options. Uh, I think the the bigger risk with not having barrel rolled last turn is if if the hard turn 
to the left lands you in a spot where you cannot boost to the right afterwards, that's when things start to get a little, uh, a little worrisome. But we'll see how Carson manages that. Um, our, our, our four astromech is um, it's a little funny astromech because um, it's good. I mean, it's good to, to decrease the difficulty of your basic one and two spin maneuvers. But not all the ships like really, really want that. You think of Poe because, because of Poe's ability, he's going to be a stress a lot. But to other ships, it's just not that good. Like, I mean, oh, it's, it's super good to do a uh, two hard blue, but other ships probably want other things. Like, for example, yes, yes Jessica Papa, she, she would rather have the BB Astromech because it helps with her ability than have a uh, two hard blue. So um, I think the R for Astromech is really good for Poe. I am not sure if you have another ship where you really want that. Pro probably Coran Horn, so he can do that one hard white instead of red. Uh, but I am not sure if there are m like lots of ships that really, really want that Astromech. All right, so looking at uh, where we are right now, just doing a quick test. Give me a second. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test, test, I know. I, I, I see you guys asking about the, the echo that's happening. I'm, I'm working on it. Working on it. Check one, two. No, so what, what's happening is my voice is... Ec is uh, like your microphone is picking up my voice when it's coming out of your headphones. So we're getting a little bit, a little bit of a loop. It sounds like Pedro doesn't have a headset on. No, I, I do have a headset on. It's probably, I hope it's not broken. No, no, no. It's, if you, if you turn off, um, <laughs> if, if you turn down your, your volume in your, in like you listening to me, I think it should uh, should resolve it, but of course you want to be able to listen to me. So make it. May, I, I'll figure it out on my side. I'm trying to. I'm putting a, a, a limiter to see if we can uh, we can get it. But it's it's fine. We're good. And you know what? It's thematic. We have uh, echo on the table. A little echo in the transmission. It's all right. Okay, talking about echo. Uh, that's the call time. Ooh, I wasn't expecting that. Going behind the cloud. Now she can do whatever she wants. She, she has that collision detector right now. She can uh, she can be as unexpected as she wants. And also here coming the girls through the rocks, but uh, that they are going to have like a, a hard time maneuvering through those those asteroids. It's going to take uh, some time from them, some rounds, while Lulo and, and Paul get all the action. All right. Looks like I put the limiter on too too hard. All right. Let, let's let's see if that works. Give me another. Give me a test one two, Pedro. Test one two. Test one two. All right. We'll try that. <laughs> All righty. So uh, now that was on, that was on my side. The issue, the 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 one that just happened right now. That was me. Okay. All righty. So. What do we have here? We had uh, Rose turning to the left. I mean, yeah, you, Jess is going to have to do a hard turn next turn. Rose kind of shimmering through. I'm sure Carson uh, wants to wants to get those uh, get those ships into the fight soon. Is, is Rose coordinating? I think Rose is coordinating. She, she has just received a stress token. So maybe thinking about the boost with Jess to the right, possibly? Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, maybe may hoping to, to intercept that echo. Ah, that will happen. Uh, that decloak shouldn't be there. I mean, that, that cloak token. Yeah, they got it. So, echo staring into the face of Jess Pava. Not much space to maneuver there. Barrel rolling doesn't really get you anything. And the question is, are you willing to trade here with uh, with Jess? And also, you know that Poe's coming. So there might, you know, I, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm telling you, if Echo doesn't move, it kind of looks like a hard two 
to the left and then a boost to the right from Poe lands Echo right in the bullseye. Um, it it kind yes. of fe kind of feels that way just a little bit. Uh, I think you uh, in that case, if you are expecting Poe to come here and try uh, some heavy laser cannon, you just cloak. I mean, you like we said, Echo wants to cloak. Uh, you have the V, you have the Force. You will have an extra two two green dice. You, you just cloak in, the, in in this scenario. I mean, you you are you are one shield away from from blue loss points, so yep. there is no rush. You you really want to protect, especially since Echo is, uh, I think, seventy one points. So Echo is really, really expensive here. You you really don't want to. Okay, yeah, just the focus. All right. Well, Grand Inquisitor coming in to support with the one hard. Now, remember, Lulo has not moved yet. Carson is second and has set up that range one shot after doing the five straight. That clears the, the stress, the blue maneuver. Focus, uh, yep. rotate. And here comes Bader. Uh, hey, you guys, in, in, in the chat, reminder, no Mandalorian spoilers. Don't allude to it. Don't comment on it every anything talking about the mandalorian is a spoiler even if if you if if <laughs> even if you don't think it's a spoiler it is a spoiler leave it leave it all right Vader. that's the last afterburners yep trying to catch a lulo and uh, that's just a focus action oh no poe decided to go the other way around Boosting, that's gonna uh, maybe it's range oh. one. We'll find out. Boost and focus. Yep, yep. Could barrel roll to get the bullseye on, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's going to be range three on Lulo. Lulo's a stress, so only three, three green dice. Is it going to be a crit? And fire control system. Oh! Crits here. Uh, has to spend the focus, but that will be half points. Last shield off of Lulo. Yep, uh, no attack from the Grand Inquisitor. Uh, so sorry, first, first gun, first gun Poe. Red blue range, range two. Three okay, hits. Okay, who, who needs mods? <laughs> uh, that would be the one force and one evade token. So, yep. showing the power of uh, of force evades, very very good combination. Yep. A little coming here, and I'm guessing he's going to spend the force to. Deny that range bonus. He's going to do it. Yep. Only 3v3. Hit crit. I mean, he, he needs at least one evade to not give the Inquisitor point. And yep, only taking one. So first <clears throat> shield, that's the first damage on the Imperial side. And here comes Echo. Oh, Echo's going to, to get shot by, by both Rose and Jess. Yeah, Rose is going to have a reroll as well because it has a friendly ship in the arc. Yeah, but I don't think Jess will get hers. I think Jess is just a little far away. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't spend that focus. No, don't. <laughs> Uh, you know what? It depends if he wants to. He's choosing violence. Oh, do it. Yeah. Do it. Yes. He chose the violins. And uh, going to be rewarded there. Yep. Uh, I think it's, it's too far away from, from Jess. From Rose. Yep. Yeah. No rerolls. No heroic. Taking two. Two shields down. But now comes the revenge shots. 
also right. range two here. So it still has a force and an evade. We know that Jess doesn't have any rerolls. He's just checked range one. Two hits after spending the focus, and Natty's out. But, yep. Now here's Rose, but I think Rose is obstructed. Uh, yep. Most likely obstructed range three. And one reroll. Yeah, but that's, he doesn't have a focus. He has a calculate. So double uh, double eyeballs means only one. And safe anyway. All right, not getting anything in that exchange versus Echo. That was a really, really sad rose because you could have just roll one, one, one hit and an eyeball. But when you bring c and you only have calculate tokens, uh, rolling two eyeballs feel, makes you feel bad. Also, Rose is in a really bad position because Rose is stressed. So, I mean, I think any blue maneuver here from Rose uh, clips the rock. Perhaps the blue bank to the left doesn't, but it's going to be really, really close. Also, um, Carson has already lost half points on Lulu, so he's behind now. Yes, right now our score is 0 to 24. Yep, uh, and Vader is in a good position to, to chase um, to chase Lulo. I mean, Lulo can still uh, lose his stress, so uh, I, I'm not sure if that hard to hard to the right going, is going to fit. Like like Poe is really really close to him, uh, so probably Lulo is going just to to bank. And the Grand Inquisitor. I mean, you you can still turn to the left with the Grand Inquisitor and try to chase Lulo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, try. I, I you can try that because Poe po yeah. is stressed. Yeah, well, Poe po, po does have that R four astromech. Yeah, but but if the like, Grand Inquisitor turns to the left towards Poe and probably boost, then the the hard two from Poe is going to go past the Inquisitor. I mean, there's a problem when you have hard blue maneuvers, but they are like too fast. Like at, the, like at this moment, Pose would most likely say, I would pay anything to being able to do one hard blue here. Are he going to still go one bank and change target and try to go after Vader? I mean, Jess Je Je Power is also in a great position. Like, like Poe and Jess can come from two different vectors against Vader. And you forget about Grand Inquisitor. It's really hard to 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 do some damage on the Inquisitor. I mean, yeah, it, it's it, only four four health ship, but it will have the force. It will have the evade. Like like last round we check, he can deny you your range one bonus. So it's really hard. At some point, you have to say, I let the Inquisitor go and I go after one of the more more expensive ships. And uh, between Echo and Vader, it's far more easy to kill Vader because Vader is not unpredictable. Bader also has spent his two afterburner charges already. Yeah, I mean, if you uh, if you take a look, if you've never taken a look at the um, the Gate of Storms calculator, it is it is a really insightful tool. Um, but if you if you take a three dice target lock focus attack and compare it to a three defense dice evade uh, calculate, will um, Will will suffice as a as a as a simulation for for force on a single attack. Your expected damage on a fully modified three dice attack against a Inquisitor attack is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 hits. So so yeah, only, most likely no damage. No, most likely no damage. Thirty one percent of the time, uh, you might get one damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the the no no dude, dude. People are doing the math. People are doing exclamation yeah. math wing on yeah. the chat. And yep, they, they, ah, they, they these guys have these girls. Sorry, it's the Jess and Rose are are giving their their backs to to Echo. E Echo's happy, really happy here. No, no attacks on her. She can lock. Yep, that's Echo's lock. Yep, because now she has that target lock force attack. All right, one oh, bank I here. Expected... I, I thought 
that would be a one heart. Probably a bar over here. You don't want to hit the rock next round. More, more dial issues. And barrel roll. So gonna have a really nice shot into Rose. There on the flank. Yep. Uh, and Rose won't get any defensive uh, rerolls. Remember, uh, Rose uh, Rose counts friendly ships in the attack arc. So if Rose is defending, it's counting on the enemy ship's firing arc. Oh, Lulo did fit there with a hard two. Nice. Now, if, if Poe can get this heavy laser cannon onto the Inquisitor, uh, the story does change here. You, you you can almost get two two damage in versus three dice and a focus. Um, we'll have to have to wait and see what happens here. Uh, that's a focus and a boost for Lulo. He first first thought of uh, of doing the bait, but ooh, he came in quick here. That is a block attempt if I've ever seen one. He is trying to yeah. avoid the one bank from Poe. Do the focus. I mean, you you could try a barrel roll here. Yep. And that blocks it too hard. Yep, so if he tries to get HLC, that would happen. Yep. And he did try the too hard to the left. So covering both options, uh, I will say Marcelo is taking advantage of the fact that he is the first player. Using the tools available. When you can't arc dodge, be a blocker. Two hits looking at Lulo right now. Has a target lock set up. Fire control system reroll. Blank to blank. Oh. Sitting at hit crit. Lulo, two dice. Spends a focus. Oh, take, Lulo. Takes a crit, though. Let's find out what the crit is. Dead. Direct hit. It is a direct hit. We got Lulo off the table. Oof. Oh, that's, that's big. F in the chat. And like I said, Poe was too close or not even the possibility for a long wolf. And now it's uh it will be arranged to no bullseye and no mods for Poe. Inquisitor is safe. Mm -hmm. Now Rose had range Two, I'm not sure if you spend the force for the range one bonus. You really want to recover that force. Oh, he shoots Bile. Yeah, he's going, he's going for it. Spend range it three bonus. Spend for three. And going to be two half points on Rose. Boom, boom. Taking care uh, of the overlay. Could, could potentially kill Rose, but has already the lock on Jess. So he's going after Jess. Two blanks there. We'll get the reroll from the target lock. Oh, there oh. you go. Handed a blessing there. Jess Pava not able to oh. get out of it, though. Uh, Still going to yep. be taking the damage because there's no friendlies at range one. Shields that, are down. Uh, like I said, it's a weird list uh, because uh, Lulu wants to get away from friends because of Lone Wolf, but Jess wants to keep, keep her friends close. <laughs> and now her, her friends are rage too. That's a close for Rico. The, it, it was a, a, a big round for, for Marcelo, uh, taking down Lulu, half points on Rose, last shield from Jess, and not suffering a single damage. Yep, I think, you know, we talked about it early on in, in this setup. Um, I think maybe what could have helped out Carson in the opening is I know that he was playing for the, for the lone wolf in the opening, staying in the corner, but Marcelo was able to uh, basically cause, cause Jess and Rose to be forced to go through the rocks. Yes. And and having to take multiple turns to do that kind of a little bit bank here, a little bit bank there, and kind of shimmying through there slowed down the timing on Rose and Jess. And, and it, it hurt Lulo big time because he was able to focus on him. So let's go ahead and make sure we get Lulo off the overlay. So our updated 
points here. We have zero points for Carson at the moment and 62 for Marcelo. Yeah, uh, problem here is um, Rose is still stressed. This is really important because you are bringing Citripio, you want those calculates, you want, you want to coordinate your other ships. Um, I don't think that Poe is in position of of going after the Grand Inquisitor. Mm -hmm. Grand Inquisitor has a really good escape route there. Uh, Echo is also in a really good spot. Has lots of of the cloak options, and Vader can also do like a three t, t roll to one side for the toilet. Oh, Ooh, okay, all right. that's a collision detector. No problem. <laughs> ah, wait a second, it's no. fine. <laughs> yep. I I have already mentioned it. I forgot. That's a collision detector. So for anybody who's not familiar with what collision detector does. It reads. Just want to make sure we have the correct wording here. So while you boost barrel roll, while you boost a barrel roll, you can move through uh, or overlap obstacles. Which, and then after you move through or overlap an obstacle, you can spend a charge to ignore its effects until the end of the round. So uh, you're ignoring the fact that it's there. You can shoot through it. You can. Uh, you don't give obstruction bonus. It, it, all the things. It's fantastic. Yep, uh, but Rose. Doesn't have the collision detector, so Rose did land on the rock, mm -hmm. and Rose ended up taking one damage. Rose is down to one hull. Echo turning through there. Yeah, might, um, might be able to trade forgot, shots with Jess. Uh, he forgot to to clean that uh, that cloak token. I'm sure. I'm, so he's I'm, not cloak. He, he's not cloak. I, I mean, for people watching at home, yeah. he still hasn't performed the action. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you have to worry about uh, Poe coming here. So probably you just uh, cloak or focus. Yeah, he's gonna go ah, ahead and just focus. grab the focus. Inquisitor, two straight past Rose, trying to. Get a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room for the Inquisitor. I mean, the Grand Inquisitor, its job is to is to be that annoying, that piece that you kind of chase. And you talked about it, right? The Inquisitor is great bait. Ooh, Darth Vader landing on a rock. Oh, okay. So all these guys apparently think they have half collision detector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be one damage for Lord Vader. You know what, though? The positioning there on Vader, even though you're on the rock, you know, I, I think you trade for it because Vader is still protected, can't take shots from anybody. Poe does not have the barrel roll. Nope. He, in any case, he, he forgot or didn't close the foils, but can I still boost? I, I mean, he's thinking of boosting. Yeah, I mean, oh. try to get a range one on Echo. Why not? This is, this is, you, you need right now, Carson needs a big swing his way. Echo is 72 points. If he can kill her, I mean, it's not likely on one shot, but if you can, uh, if you can kill her in the next couple of turns, it does put you ahead. Two hits. There's the lock. Uh, and okay, no, fo oh. no focus because he boosted. Ooh. I'm uh, going to spend a force here, I think. Yep. And he has an, the shield. He, he's got an evade. Uh, but you really want to you really want to cloak. All right, so he's gonna. That's take, the thing with Echo. Yep, he's gonna take both shields then. Uh, it's going to be a range three attack on Jess. Jess is one one damage away from half points. Um. There's I, a shot I would just coming back. There. Yeah. Yeah. There's no luck. Only one. Oh, blank out. Only one is all he needs. Half, half points, points on Jess. All right, Jess gets an opportunity to fire back. Yeah, I mean, you could you could shoot at the Inquisitor, but did you really want to? No, you don't want the Inquisitor here. No, you, you see if you make it so that he could take get that half point. <laughs> all right, a little bit of revenge possibly. Hit crit. Yep, and Echo is also one one damage away from half points. Not gonna happen. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Nice. So it's another good round. I mean, you have lost two shields from Echo, but you have already get half points on another ship. The only ship from Carson's side that hasn't give away points is Poe. Mm -hmm. Now Poe is stressed um, here, so no uh, no K turns or talent rolls coming up here. So that means most likely Echo will try to try to go towards Jess and then uh, get behind the formation. Yeah, his three ships are stressed. There's just Jess, uh, but Jess is no no problem. Jess want to go straight. Uh, Rose is a problem. Rose is um, like uh, I think it was three rounds before. Mm -hmm. And he has, she has uh, three rounds ago, she got distressed. And she hasn't been able to get rid of that stress token in, in three rounds. So she really, really, really wants to get that, that stress token away, get those calculates, probably a coordinated, coordinated action, obviously not this round, but probably in the following rounds um, before, before she dies. She, she's at one hole left. Um, for Marcelo's side, Vader and Inquisitor are in great position uh, to fly away from from the resistance ship. Even even Echo uh, Echo spent both charges of collision detector, right? Because yes, uh, no, yeah. no, 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 just one. No, just one. one because it's okay. one per turn, not one per. Oh, movement. okay, right. Yeah. yeah. It's not each time you move through. It's like if you spend the charge here, then you you have you don't have to worry about that specific rock for the rest of the round. Yeah, I right. forgot about that. It's been a while since I saw that collision detector. Yeah, because it's it's uh, ignore until the end of the round. Alrighty, Jess, one straight. That was pretty expected. Just trying to hope to have something in the in the arc. The one bank does fit. Echo in a box right now, but hasn't maneuvered yet. Echo could do. I mean, people are asking for a 4K. I, I think it's a pretty aggressive. I I would do a three hard to the right with with Echo probably. And uh, that's going to be a coordinate on on Jess for a lock. Taking it on Vader. That's insurance for later. That is trying to set up for a future possibility. There's 18 minutes left on the clock. Ooh, Ooh no. Echo is not. Uh, Can he barrel roll out of there, or is he about to get lit up by both those ships? I mean, to, to the right is impossible. To the left, um... I think you cloak. This is you cloak and hope. Yep, you cloak. You do not want to lose an action. Echoes in the box. Yep, that's ah. Uh, yeah, that's a cloak. Yep. <laughs> Slap it down <laughs> like oh no. <laughs> I mean, you you have four dice, force evade. Let let's hope you are fine. Brace for impact. I I mean, you, you know that Poe can is not going to be able to shoot at you. You only have to worry about Rose. I, and yes, the problem is yes, have a log and focus on you. Uh, Rose, I, I, I'm not sure if Rose have yes on arc, so she can have that that reroll. Has Vader coming? Um, but I don't think he will get shots on Rose. Trying to kill Rose before Rose gets to shoot, but I don't think she will be in his in his firing arc. I think you just lock with Vader. Yeah. And a focus. Uh, okay, that was a lock on Rose. I would have set my lock um, probably on Poe, but... Uh, he's, that's, he's trying that's to take the game. guaranteed shot. Poe might be able to wiggle out of uh, uh, of the shot there. And right there, so see, Poe should be able to boost uh, boost out of Vader's arc, but of course, you don't have, you're not currently locked on Vader, so maybe you're not worried too much about it. 
I, I think, think you, I, I'd I, like to see him just boost. Uh, the problem with boosting is that you get uh, you will get an unobstructed shot from from the Inquisitor. I mean, if the Inquisitor has you in arc, it's probably going to be an obstructed shot. Oh, he! Oh, Vader does get Rose. Just barely. I I thought Rose was was out, but but she wasn't. Could be a dead Rose. Breaking one. the lock. You only need one. And dead two Rose. hits in a crit. That's it. Uh, you have one reroll because of Poe, but no, even <laughs> nothing. And the shot, uh, the, the shot there into Rose, of course, not only getting a ship off the table, but also taking away some threat from Echo had that other ship sitting there at range one. Yep, no attack from the Inquisitor. I mean, you have, you have luck, Echo, you shoot at Echo. Four against four. I mean, you could try at Bader, which also be at four dice. Bader doesn't have an evade token. It is a better chance to actually do damage. Um, barely. And he is going for Vader. Hit crit. I mean, if Vader rolls, uh, oh, well, he will need to roll to lots of blanks here. But let's see. And it will be one going through. There you go. Plink. Oh, oh no! I I think at the end he he decided to go after which ship. Uh, it was that Vader. It was that Vader. Oh, okay. So yeah. okay, yeah. That that's last ship from from Vader. So Bader one, I mean all all of, of Marcel's ships are one damage away from giving away from giving half points. But I, I don't think there's enough time to chase all those three ships, especially considering that Jess is already down to three hull. Bader is coming in here. Could. Kill Jess before Jess gets to shoot. Uh, Poe is like really far away from providing some backup to Jess. So uh, looking... I, 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 I would say it's game, but uh, we still have like a little time, so anything could happen. I mean, Jess could survive Vader attack and then shoot back at Vader and then kill Vader and then the, the, it's a completely different game. One of the things, I mean, if we just look at the points right now, if you're able to get Vader, right, Vader 75 points, uh, then you're just you're looking for 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 just a little bit more. Vader, does Vader and a half get you over? Yeah, 75. Yeah, I think Va Vader, Va Vader and, and, uh, and half of either Vader one. I have a Gizador. Yep. I mean that, that that's what you need to do here. Um, if Poe wants to do a 4K, then probably the Grand Inquisitor can attempt to block that, or can just turn to the left and run away. That's very true. Now, before we go too far, thank you for everybody who's tuned in today, 437 beautiful people around the world. I want to remind you that today's event is a charity event, exclamation point, donate for information about uh, La Casa de Todos, a charity supporting the homeless population in Peru because this event the Lima Open is put on by, uh, by some members of the Peruvian uh, X-Wing community let's go ahead and take a look at that here we go Jess taking the three bank getting aggressive trying to take away some space from Vader yep I mean you you have time you don't have if you you need to kill Vader you don't have to kill Vader this round right So come coming here, Echo, more locks from that targeting computer. That's a good good replacement from uh from the uh how is it? Passive sensors. I have forgotten about his name. Passive sensors. Better bump him. 
Was Is that, that a, a Talon, Talon roll? Talon roll, trying to get Vader. Here we go. But I think I think the Inquisitor is in the way. Oh yep. no! Try it again. Try it again. Try the other direction. No! no. Oh. oh! Oh my goodness! Uh, that you know what? I am almost. I'm sure if we had the template there, it would be so close, so close for that to fit. Oh my goodness! That could have been a, an absolutely amazing move. But of course, Marcelo putting the Inquisitor in the right spot to block that. Yeah. That was an amazing move. He predicted that. Oh, he doesn't have to spend the lock. I do spend the lock only for one because you, you only have the force here. And oh, okay, just, it worked. Just, just, just there you go. Just do do the yeah. unconventional thing and see what you get. Got two okay, dates. Yeah, one damage going to, to Jess that now down to two. Uh Jess will have a, an obstructed shot at your Inquisitor. Ah, but the Grand Crystal has an evade, so... Yes, has the focus. Uh, two forces and evade. Right. Solve the problem. There you go. We talked about it. The defensive nature of the Grand Inquisitor, the evade plus force, great combination. You're, you're not expected to do damage on three dice, even if you have three hits. It really... <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. usually how that goes. And now, uh, this is going to be a little more more problems for Carson. Uh, Echo is behind, yes. I mean, Vader can turn away to the left, probably deciding, okay, Echo is going to take care of Jess. Then Vader should go uh, trying to start chasing Poe. The Grand Inquisitor is also in a great position here. Poe is too close to the rock. So can attempt like a like a two straight and uh, evade and, and trying to to start recovering that last force token. Ah, it's it, it's going to be really hard for the resistance here. Yep, I I, I do want to say props to Marcelo. He has been flying a fantastic game, really putting his pieces uh, everywhere they need to go, taking advantage of. I do feel for most of the game positionally he has been ahead. So. You know, I know a lot of people are, uh, you know, it's easy to focus on, on the fact that, yes, Carson's uh, green dice have been on the, a little bit on the low side, or at least they feel that way. Um, but Marcelo has been putting his ships in the spot for for that to happen, right? Like, you, yeah. You got you to you gotta, you gotta have the positioning first. Yes. The, 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 um, the way the, this, was, this was played, I mean, most of the time, like, Jess was suffering shots, but Jess didn't have any friends at range 0 to 1. To, to get her rolls. And that's what you want to do when you, you bring Jess. Uh, instead from, from Marcelo's side, he also rolled some bad dice, but when you have the force and when you have the evade, I mean, you have to, per, to perform that evade action. If you somehow decide to perform a log action or, or a focus action, then we would have talk, we would have been talking about probably some uh, one, a whole left inquisitor probably a dead inquisitor i mean and, and he knows that he must perform that evade action if he wants the inquisitor to to survive so yep he he knows exactly what to do with 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 the ice list uh there is one force flo floating around that's uh the eternal force yep <laughs> I mean, the force is all, all among living things, so that explains that force there. I mean, if, I, I mean, if you count the force, there's a one force token next to Echo, three force next to Vader, two force next to Grand Inquisitor, and one force token floating around. Yeah, that's just an extra one. Uh, no space for a boost for Poe, that means he's going to lose that action. Good news here for Jess is that Jess will get her reroll because Poe is now close to her, holding her hand. Don't die, please don't die. <laughs> you can do it. I'm, you can I'm hold here it for you. You can hold it. That's going to be range three, three v three. Here we go. Three dice coming in. That's three hits. Oh. Doesn't even need the modifiers. 
This is an unobstructed shot. Range three has a reroll because Poe is sitting there at range one. Let's see if she gets it. Does that work? No damage on Jess. That that's on Poe. Poe po is the one who gave who gave her the reroll. And now, uh, does Jess have any luck? Nope. All right, she won't have any mods here. Oh, okay, Just only one. one. That's should going be... after Echo, I think. Yeah, should be pretty easy. Cause it has all the all the stuff. Got it. Yep. Um, uh, you you have talked about the, those uh, Echo red dice. I I don't remember if he has spent the fifth brother for fifth brother's ability a single time this round. He has not had to, no. Nope, just the luck. It does, it, man. It, it does feel really good when the re rolls just work out, and you don't, you don't have to spend two yep. resources in order to get a to get a hit. It's real nice, real nice. Now, I want to remind you today, uh, it is the top sixteen right now. For anybody who didn't know, it's a top sixteen. Type exclamation point round, and the the computer will tell you where to find the <laughs> the answer for what round it is. Um, by the way, I know some people were asking, do you have a list of commands? We have done some some housekeeping and maintenance uh, this weekend. If you type exclamation point commands, you will see the uh, there's a link to a list of all of the commands that you can trigger here uh, in the chat, or at least most of them. Uh, there's some of them that we need to uh, need to add onto that list, but everything there is valid that you see. Uh, additionally, um, this round and all of our rounds brought to you by Curl Paw Creatives. It is currently their Black Friday sale. No coupon code needed. Just head over to the shop, curlpawcreatives.com. Get your acrylic swag, uh, including the uh, official Gold Squadron Podcast LED lamp, or get it customized if you like with your squadron logo and or a faction logo, whatever feels good. Get one, get two, get a whole set. There's seven factions, whatever feels good. Well, uh, so there is an update on the local players here. I'm being told that uh, we have some good news and bad news for Peruvians. Uh, Juan Carlos Ruiz, who was on our first match yesterday, has, uh, has just lost to Piotr. So that's one Peruvian out. But Arturo Aliaga managed to win his game. So that's uh, at least one Peruvian in the top eight. We still have hope. And I think also Juan Pablo Gonzalez from Chile won won his game. All we right. have a, at least a couple of South Americans on, on our top eight. All righty here, just a, a heads up. Thought we were on our own timer. Here's the, the cloak for, for Echo. Probably hoping for a block here. Uh, yep, yes, was blocked. 4K, finally the 4K from Echo. More 4Ks this time for the Inquisitor. And more 4Ks, all the Imperial ships doing a 4K maneuver. Everybody 4K. And all the resistance ships bump him. I think that was a, a, an attempt to slow down the ships to see if you can catch something in the arc. Uh, not happening. No. There's going to be a range 3 obstructed again, yes. Oh, it's only one hit. Uh, you fire control system, yes. You have the force. The force is with you. And uh, she still has one reroll. Let's see. And nope. One crit going through Jess. Weapons failure. Ooh, weapons failure. Sad. Yep. Sad and Echo, Echo's attack is coming here. 
Range 2. Let's see if Echo can finish Jess. Not nope. like that. Not like that. No. All right, so that is the game, 0-103. to 103. Uh, While not a full table, uh, Carson unable to get points. One hit away from half on all three of those Imperial Aces, just holding on, holding on for dear life. Uh, congratulations to Marcelo Duarte moving on to the top eight. So we need to get moving here on giveaways.